This story from my past happened about 32 years ago in East Texas. My mom and dad divorced when I was 16 years old, and my brothers and I lived with my mom. My dad visited us once in a while, but not really on a consistent basis. He was a gambler, which was one of the reasons my parents split up, and tended to not come around when he was broke, but on the rare occasion that he won big, he would visit and spend money on us, and then disappear again. My dad said he had a job as a shuttle driver for a local hotel. He told my brothers and I that the shuttle driving was just a cover, that he actually worked for organized crime, which he claimed owned the hotel. He said his real job was to drive out to various places in the area to pick up fugitives running from warrants, or otherwise wanted by law enforcement, bring them to the hotel to hide, and then later they would move on by means my dad said he didn't know. My dad was always a blowhard, and always exaggerating, or outright lying, so my brothers and I just blew it off and didn't think much of the claim, until something strange happened. My dad disappeared. It was 1988, and I was 22 years old and a college student still living at home. I worked as a full-time disc jockey on the overnight shift, 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., at a local radio station. My middle brother was 19 years old, lived in an apartment with a friend, and worked at a nearby Dairy Queen. My youngest brother was nine and lived at home. One day my brother called my mom and I and asked us if we knew where my dad was. He says some men came to the Dairy Queen while he was at work and asked him if he'd seen my dad recently. My brother truthfully told him that he hadn't seen or heard from my dad in months and that he often does that, cuts off contact for months at a time. My brother said these men didn't say who they were, but seemed satisfied and left. My brother wondered if these men or anyone had called to talk to us and ask us where my dad was. We too hadn't heard from my dad in months. The following day, my brother says the men returned to his work, and this time flashed badges and claimed to be FBI agents. He says they were very aggressive and demanded that my brother tell them where my dad was. My brother kept insisting, truthfully, that he didn't know where my dad was, that the last he heard, he worked at a local hotel as a shuttle driver. But the experience upset him, and he called my mom and I again. Upset, my mom called the hotel where my dad worked. The man she spoke to said my dad had disappeared weeks ago, and he had no idea where he went. The following day, my brother was at work when his roommate called and said that someone had apparently been in their apartment. The roommate claimed that when he got home from work, he found the sliding glass door open and the place ransacked, but nothing appeared to be missing. My brother, very upset, went to his apartment and found that in fact, his address book was missing from the breakfast nook and a teddy bear he recently bought for his son and a photo of his son were missing from his bedroom. Now, my brother and my mom and I were beside ourselves with anger, fear, and paranoia. We went to the local FBI office to complain that the FBI had done this and to tell them once and for all, my brother does not know where my dad is. Well, as you might have guessed, the FBI claimed no knowledge of the event and claimed that they were not looking for my dad. They said none of their agents had contacted my brother. Furthermore, when my mother told them my dad had claimed that he worked for organized crime, the FBI would neither confirm nor deny that the hotel had ties to organized crime or that there was an investigation going on. My mom called the hotel again and told the manager that men were looking for my dad, that they were terrorizing my brother and flat out asked the guy if there was any truth to my dad's claim to be working for organized crime. The man laughed and told her, there's no such thing as the mafia. While we were trying to make sense of all these weird details, we kept wondering why my brother was being harassed, but not my mother or me. 
That's when I was reminded of a weird event that happened to me about two or three weeks prior. Because I worked overnight, I was often wide awake in the middle of the night on my days off with nothing to do. One night, I went to the local cable TV company where my friend worked as a computer system operator to hang out with him for a few hours and bullshit a little. At about 3.30 a.m., he had a big computer job to do, so it was time for me to go home, so I left. As soon as I pulled out from his company's driveway, a car was immediately behind me, tailgating me. It was on me so quickly it scared the crap out of me. The car seemed to just appear out of nowhere. He also had his high beams on and was blinding me, and I couldn't make out anything about the car behind me. I couldn't see inside to see how many people were in the car, what they looked like, or anything. I couldn't even see what kind of car it was. I changed lanes to let the tailgater pass, but he changed lanes with me. I moved again, and he again moved. He was tailgating me and blinding me, and now seemed to be following me. I stopped at the intersection and got in at the left turning lane with my signal on, and he got behind me. Since there was no other traffic at all anywhere around, when the light changed, I zoomed across the intersection, streaked across all lanes of traffic into the far right lane, and went through the intersection, trying to lose him. Even still, he followed me. It was undoubtedly clear. I cut into a nearby neighborhood and tried to lose him, but he kept following me anyway. I finally managed to zoom back out into the intersection and crossed over and went to the 7-Eleven at the corner and jumped out and ran inside, yelled to the clerk that someone was following me. As I did, I saw the car that was following me cut through the parking lot of the 7-Eleven and for the first time I got a look at the car. It was a late model tan colored four door and there were two white guys in it. The clerk just blew me off and said I was exaggerating, that it was probably just kids messing with me and to let it go. I left, but I was still spooked by it and didn't want to go straight home. I was afraid they might follow me and I didn't want them to know where I lived, so I went to my workplace. I knew that the disc jockey on the air that night would be my friend Paula, so I decided to go visit her on the air for a little while and hang out and calm down. I told her what happened and hung out for about two hours. She also felt it was probably just some punks being jerks and that calmed me down. But when I got home, now over two hours since this car started harassing me, the damn car was at my house. As I was coming down the street to my apartment and about to turn right, I saw the damn car pull out of my apartments, and as it passed me, the SOBs flashed their high beams on and off at me. It was them. What the fuck? I panicked and called Paula at the radio station and told her what happened. She was freaked. She was like, oh my god, why would they wait for you at your home? Who is this? Oh my god. Call the police. I was freaked out as to how they could possibly know where I lived. And why would they wait two hours for me? And then when they finally saw me, flash their lights at me, and just leave. I mean, what? But now, remembering that event and putting it together with my brother's quote FBI visit and apartment break-in, it seemed obvious that it was all tied together. I hadn't thought about it before, but now I remember. My car was actually my dad's car. He gave it to me about two months earlier when he got a new one. So if someone had been looking for my dad, they might have thought I was him. And when they saw me coming home, realized I'm not him, and then just left. But who was messing with us? And why? Where was my dad? Why are these strange people harassing us? My mom, my brother, and I went to the local police 
and filed a missing persons report and a complaint. We spoke to a very nice detective. About five days later, we got a call from the detective. He had solved the whole strange case. It turns out, my dad disappeared because he owed his employers more than $50,000 in gambling debts. The detective confirmed that my dad did work for some unsavory characters, but said they weren't organized crime per se. He had no idea if my dad was shuttling fugitives or not. He said my dad was hiding out in Nevada, and that he had spoken to him, and he was alive and well, but hiding. We asked, then who the hell were those men, and why were they bothering my brother? The detective explained that it's not uncommon for unsavory bounty hunters and debt collectors to impersonate law enforcement and call and harass people. My brother asked, how did they get in his apartment? The detective said a sliding glass door is easy peasy to open, and they probably stole the address book hoping it had my dad's contact information in it. They stole the teddy bear and pictures to use to scare my brother, which worked. I asked the detective why the men only harassed my brother, and not my mom and I. The detective said it's because my dad had used my brother as a reference on his job application at the hotel and provided my brother's address and phone number. The quote FBI agents probably figured he was close to my dad and either maintained contact with him or if threatened, would contact him. Eventually, my dad turned up back in town and acted like nothing had ever happened. He never spoke of the incident and we never brought it back up. I guess he got the money he owed them. I don't know. But that's my story. Thanks for reading.